Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to video number 10 of the series Mastering the Inkosi System Engineering Handbook in preparation for the Inkosi System Engineering Professional Exam. Video number 10 covers chapter 4.9 of the System Engineering Handbook and uh, that specifically is the verification process. My name is Lance Sherry and I will be your tour guide for this section. So we have the System Engineering Handbook that codifies uh, over a hundred years of wisdom of how to build and test and field systems. Um, and uh, these activities and processes are required because we're building complex systems in complex life cycles. Altogether, there are uh, 59 system engineering life cycle processes and activities that are included in the System Engineering Handbook. And those have been categorized into seven groups. This video is uh, part of the uh, technical processes group. And specifically, we're looking at the verification process. The verification process occurs after the system has been implemented and integrated. And now we're going to test the um, system elements, the subsystems, and the systems to make sure that they've met the requirements that have been defined in the requirements and design process. The objectives for this video are to um, identify the purpose of the verification process discuss the outputs, inputs, and process activities, identify seven um, verification techniques that are used, and then just make sure we've got some terminology correct, uh, discuss verification procedure, requirements, verification traceability matrix, and the idea of independent verification. So the System Engineering Handbook describes the verification process as the means to provide objective evidence that the system or system element fulfills its specified requirements and characteristics. Um, so the emphasis here is to document through a series of tests with data that the system has met the requirements and, um, and that the system has been built correctly. Um, in, in plain language, um, we, we kind of say that verification testing answers the question, is the system built right? In other words, did we build the, the system according to the requirements? And does the system do what the requirements say it's supposed to do? The, um, the handbook um, definition identifies this idea of specified requirements and characteristics. And uh, so what does exactly that mean? Well, it's kind of a broad, open-ended statement, but it basically says that if you go back and look at the requirements and the design documentation, you'll see that there are things like system requirements, there are functional definitions, there are input-output flow definitions, there are definitions of interface, the connection between the, uh, the system elements and the subsystems, and then there are other design properties that have been specified. And all of these things have to be uh, verified during the verification process by means of verification test procedures. So the um, outputs, inputs, and activities are as follows. Starting on the left-hand side, um, we, uh, in order to do verification testing, you got to start off with the system requirements, as well as the interface definition, and that's the interface between the systems subsystems and system elements. And then uh, we're going to get incrementally increasing levels of integrated systems. Um, so we're going to take the systems, their interfaces, and their requirements, and we're going to develop verification test procedures that will be used to perform verification. On the, uh, with regards to the outputs, um, there is a verification procedure. So that is the instructions on how to do the test. There is the results of those tests are documented in a verification report. And then the, um, to make sure that all the requirements have been verified, there's something called the Requirements Verification Traceability Report. That's a mapping between requirement and verification test procedure. So the um, RVTR or RVTM for matrix 
identifies or confirms that every requirement has been verified and that the, the verification test is maps back to a requirement. So there's an, a kind of an interesting diagram in the, in the handbook, and just to kind of step through it, starting from the top of the diagram, um, the top on the right-hand side, uh, we say that an item, like a, a system element, a subsystem, is submitted for verification, reference to a requirement. We, we don't want to test things that are not defined by the requirements. And then uh, the verification action is that of the test itself that yields an expected result that's calculated and determined as part of writing the test procedure and compared to a, an actual or obtained result, the result of the test. So the obtained result and the expected result are compared, and if they match each other, then we say that the system is verified. If they don't match, then the system, a problem report is written up, and the system has to be um, revised. Sometimes that revision is to change the requirement because the requirement may have be, had an error, but most of the time the requirement is correct and we have to go back and change the implementation of the system. So um, the, the content of a verification test procedure uh, is kind of like your high school physics experiment. Um, you're going to start off with a description of the item to be verified. There will then be a description of the expected results and the success criteria. So how do we know that the system met the requirement? Then there's going to be a description, uh, typically a long detailed description, um, on the step-by-step -step method and technique for performing the verification test. Um, you're going to identify the data that's needed and also the equipment that's needed. So very much like your physics lab experiment, uh, the same, same idea for the verification test procedure, generally for each uh, individual requirement. The, the verification test procedure relies very heavily on the requirements. And as a result, as we've kind of emphasized in the previous videos, requirements must be quantitative, uh, measurable, unambiguous, understandable, and testable. With regards to the cost of verification, the time it takes to verification, having good requirements can significantly reduce the costs and the time and, uh, and make the whole verification test procedure uh, process more, more streamlined. Another item is, uh, for definition, is the requirements verification traceability matrix. Uh, this maps all of the requirements to the ver re verification test cases to make sure that we haven't missed any of the requirements. With regards to verification techniques, there are seven kind of standard techniques. Um, let's read through them together first, and then we'll go back and, uh, and discuss them. Um, there's the inspection um, analysis. Number three is demonstration, so we're verifying. Verif verifying by demonstration, uh, testing, analog and similarity, simulation, and sampling. So just to take a minute and to kind of uh, run through those uh, inspection, you're going to look at the requirement and you're going to look at the device, the system, and inspect and make sure that it has buttons and the buttons are labeled as follows. Analysis is a kind of an oddball verification. There are times when you can't actually verify the system in operation, for example, out in space. You'd have to launch it and operate it out in space to perform verification. So in this case, you would do some theoretical analysis to demonstrate compliance. Um, number three, demonstration. Number four, testing are very similar to each other, and that's the idea that you put the system element, the subsystem and the system on a bench, in the lab, in the field, and you're going to uh, stimulate the system with inputs and then record the outputs and make sure that those outputs match the expected values. Analogy and similarity is also an interesting one. There may be duplicate parts of a overall system, and it may not be necessary to test each individual duplicate part. You could just test one and claim uh, uh, 
compliance through similarity by uh, saying that th these tests apply to these other components. Um, simulation uh, verification testing is something that you can do kind of on mock-ups or models. Um, there has to be a good reason not to test the actual system, uh, but sometimes it's a way of uh, making sure that the components are going to work together when they're, they're integrated. And then lastly, verification testing using sampling is trying to address an issue, a system that has stochastic behavior, uh, where the outputs are not deterministic, and so you would take some samples and use that to describe, uh, to do the verification. Um, so people always ask, do we have to wait until the final system is, is uh, integrated before we can do uh, verification? So the answer to that is no, most definitely not. You want to start with the very lowest level system elements and verify each individual one. And as they, as they get verified, then you'll integrate them uh, to the subsystems and eventually the systems and perform verification testing on each of those levels. The lowest level, um, the system elements, your verification test, testing is kind of on input outputs and the functional. Uh, once you start integrating systems, now you're going to get to test the interfaces between the systems, as well as the system requirements, the functions, I.O., and the design properties. So verification testing is done as the subsystems are integrated. And the type of verification test that's done changes a little bit, because obviously you can't test the interfaces between subsystems until you have the system elements joined together, uh, multiple system elements joined together to form a subsystem. A very, very important idea is this idea of independent verification. Independent verification. And the idea here is that um, if you ask the engineers that uh, wrote the requirements and built the system to test it, they would have biases in what they tested it and how they tested it. They may unintentionally uh, test things for success as opposed to testing completely and consistently to identify the, the uh, faults in the system. So it's generally good practice to have a different group of engineers who will perform the verification testing. This group receives the requirements, kind of handed over the wall, a set of requirements, and then they read the requirements, develop tests independently, and then perform the verification test procedures. So that's a way of bringing fresh eyes to, to the task. Um, verification, integration, and validation, these are three independent processes that are part of the technical processes in the System Engineering Handbook. And they really, all three of them kind of go hand in hand. You can't do one without the other. Um, so for example, we mentioned uh, integration and the need to verify the sub, the system elements before, in a, before do, performing verification in the subsystem. And so in that sense, verification and integration um, have to be coordinated. Validation testing we'll discuss in a future video um, uh, can take credit for some of the verification testing that's done previously. And that's why verification and validation activities can be coordinated. So let's see what you know about the verification process. Um, so at this point, I will ask you to pause the video to take the quiz, write down your answers to these eight questions. And then when you're ready, uh, you'll unpause, you'll play and go to the next slide. All right, here's the chance to see what you know. How well do you know the verification process as defined in the System Engineering Handbook? The answers are shown in orange. Uh, feel free to pause the video to check your answers. So thank you for completing the verification process video for the System Engineering Handbook. The next video is the transition process. And if you like this video, please give us the thumbs up.